Hey guys, Chris Campbell with Chris Campbell's Analog Life, and uh, mill's all set up and ready to go. And I've been doing some test cuts, just real simple stuff. But I actually wanted to show some footage and also uh, show some of the CAD programs and stuff like that. I'm not sure how much that'll be on there. But before I started, I wanted to actually show one of the mistakes I already made. So I'd seen online that there's actually this Lego uh, CNC machine, which is kind of a weird reference, right? But they were actually using this green uh, floral foam. It's for using like for flower arrangements, stuff like that. Well, I was cutting with it, and I could show examples later. Uh, but you know, it aerates, you know, it kind of chops it up, pushes it up into the air, um, and the lungs started hurting. And I'm like, why? Why is that? And not only does it actually irritate your uh, air paths or your breathing pathways, uh, it's also a carcinogen. <laughs> so that's bad. Uh, so that's out. Um, but I had some suggestions, so I've switched over to pink uh, insulation foam. This is R10, you know, just some simple styrofoam, but it's nice and solid. I mean, um, so yeah, I'm going to use this instead. Um, so this will be what I'll do some of the examples with, and hopefully, it's, it's still, I should say, um, that MSDS, the material safety data sheet for this thing, says it still can actually irritate your, your breathing but uh, it should be less, and also this time I'm going to actually wear a mask. <laughs> Who'd have thunk safety first? So, uh, yeah, let's get cutting, and the other thing I was going to say is that I, I'm doing this first. I mean, I could, I could switch over to wood. I've been thinking about wood, um, just simple pine, but uh, why break a bit if I don't have to? This stuff is not going to break from, you know, if I jam it in the wrong way, um, and the, the floral foam is even easier, so... I'll try this out first and then we'll see where we can go from here. So this is a work holding plate that I got with the mill. This is actually secured down with these four screws here to the X table. Um, so it's got a bunch of mounting holes. These are actually screw holes in here versus having to have uh, like a mounting hole. This is actually what is in the X table. This slots in and you screw into this thing. Anyways. Um, I wanted to have an easier way of doing this, and I realize this is not the best way to do it, but basically the easy thing about, especially with foam, is that you can you know, put in some screws, put this on here, and then just push it down onto the screws, and that works as a nice makeshift work holder. I'll probably put one more here. Um, I know, I know, you purists out there aren't going to like it, but I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it'll be fine for now. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm just getting started, and really I'm just testing out the, the cam software. So that's all I really care about. So, uh, yeah, this will just push right down onto those. And then that I did that for the green foam, it held it fine. So then that's actually how I'm going to be actually securing it to the, to the table for now. And then I'll work on, you know, I need to actually start cutting some jigs and work holders and everything else as well. So I'll get there, don't worry. Okay, so we have a new cam bam project going here and CamBam is actually the cam software that will take a 3D model or an image or anything else I can think up or draw and turn that into G-code which then can go into the controller or sorry into Mach 3 and then that gets pushed down to the controller the controller actually moves the step promoters the amount of appropriate steps so that's kind of the the workflow of it all so I'm gonna actually take a picture that I've been working with and insert that as a new image here from bitmap and you can see these are all the different iterations I've had it started with this picture this is my, my dog Millie uh, but I ended up with this one so these reasons will become obvious later but I decided to rotate it and then make the background black okay so we're gonna put in the rough size of the block that I'm working with which is obviously it's gonna be big it's gonna be bigger than this but this is about the the max profile that I want to actually cut and then the depth is gonna be half an inch and then you can see that surface was created and then you can see it kind of transfers I mean it's it's not perfect obviously it's a pixelated and everything else but that's just the 2d image we rotate it then, we can select it and rotate it. You can see there's a bunch of different levels here. You can see that there's actually 
there actually are only 16 different levels because I converted that image to a 16-bit bitmap for simplicity's sake. And you can see the background, which is black, is the lowest. And then the there's different levels here, but then the parts that ended up being white were the highest points. And you can see there's also some little spikes from where there were single pixels that were uh, white versus their their neighbors. And I'm sure there's ways to optimize this, but this is just kind of where I started. So this is the image we'll be working with. It kind of kind of reminds me of like one of those pin where you like put your hand on the back of like one of those little pin beds and and it raises it up. It's kind of looks like that. But we're going to take this and do a machining operation. So do a 3D profile. Then on the left here, this is where all the settings are. And so we're going to take profile method, horizontal. Uh, we're going to start from zero. So that's here. Cutting depth. Total cutting depth is a half an inch. This is like what I set. Uh, stock surface starts at zero. And then the de depth increment we're going to set to 0.05. So there's a maximum of 10 total passes that could happen. Feed rate maxes out at 40 on mach my machine right now, which is, should be okay. It's okay, especially because it's a foam, so that won't matter. When it gets into metal and wood and other harder materials, it it, uh, it matters a lot more. Uh, so we're going to do level first. And then the tool, I only have a couple right now, so we're going to stick with the eighth inch tool. And then everything else should be good. All right, let's generate this. Generate toolpaths. All right. And you can see it has a lot of passes here. But we'll see how it turns out, and then we'll come back in a little while. See what that ends up looking like. OK, I'm ready to start. Just about ready to start. Um, I've got the tool right at the surface, this is at zero, zero, zero. This is what I'm setting as zero, zero, zero. It's actually limited a little bit because of the depth that I can go back there. Um, but this is the depth that yeah, I'm just kind of eyeballing the Z, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to try <laughs> a, uh, a 3D profile of a picture of my dog. Uh, it might be a little ambitious, to be honest, but uh, we'll see if we can do it. Uh, it should be about, it's about three and a half inches deep, which should take it to about here and then about five and a half long. Uh, I really have no idea if this is going to work, but we'll keep the camera on it for now and hopefully time lapse it all out. And There might be some breaks, we'll see, just because uh, I might have to stop it, but uh, yeah, let's see how long this all takes. That's supposed to be the tool change. Uh, that's when you're supposed to change out the tool. I'm not sure why it only does, it only does an eighth of an inch up, but I'm not changing the tool, so here we go. I may have set the settings wrong here. So we've had a couple false starts here. Uh, first the file was wrong, and I'll show that later. Uh, CAD file. And then uh, the controller crapped out. So I'll try this one more time, and if not, we'll give it up for the night. So one thing that I was doing here was the level first. So I was going to actually level, take each slice off at a time, and then once it start reaching the profile, it would actually start uh, changing. Basically, it would be like 
doing a 3D print in reverse kind of. I guess subtractive method though. Uh, so what I did is I regenerated the cam or the the G code from the cam bam, the software program I'm using, and I'm gonna just use the same thing because it's gonna end up taking out the same area, and you'll actually see the difference of where it starts cutting. I'm guessing it'll actually start cutting in small areas first, but uh, this will be interesting to see how it's different. Here we go. Apparently not that different at all. <laughs> ah, yeah. Nothing different at all. Yeah, I'm not really sure why. So this, again, this is a cam thing. Uh, which I'm still learning, so... I'll go try generating again and see if I can't find a different way to... get this... going faster. Well, as we saw, this drawing did not quite work. This was where it was passing. It was doing this pocket first, and you could kind of see some of the cuts here. So these are the different levels, I think. But you can see it would have gotten there eventually. It does slices, and it would have gotten there eventually. Um, it might have even been better resolution, but I didn't want to wait. <laughs> so we're going to try a different method here, which I found... Uh, so what we first do is we select the surface and we just delete it. And now select it again. We're going to create a new machine, a new 3D profile. So we'll go through and put the same settings. Start from the bottom. We start same that same drill, the same end mill rather. Ah, come on, there we go. Okay, that's all good. We keep depth first. Okay, that looks good. Change the feed rate. I could probably change this in the standard settings. It defaults to 30. Uh, depth looks good still. Stock looks good still. 0 0.05 depth increment. And again, what that means is that that the end mill won't won't plunge more than a half. Uh, sorry, 50 thousandths at a time. Which is probably conservative giving it given its foam, but it'll be fine for now. And then alright, so then here's the real thing. So we're gonna go instead of horizontal, we could do vertical, which would just do the same thing in a different direction. But what we're gonna do is called waterline, and we're gonna do the finish because it's foam and we don't need to rough it out first. Okay, so we're gonna do waterline finish, and then we'll generate this and you'll see just how drastically different it is. Let's zoom out a little bit. So remember, before it was just completely filled with cuts that took forever. And now we're going to see if we can't do this a little faster. Click generate. All right, and these are now ready. Now you can see that there's actually a variety of cuts here, but it's only actually doing it around the part that kind of matters. Um, I'm not sure if that is exactly what the definition of waterline is, but. It's good enough for me. But it does, again, the thing that's different here is it's going to leave all of this material here on the outside of it. Um, so that will look different than before. Um, and it actually ignores that whole pocket that was already cut. And you can see there's the different levels here. So there's a total, this, I'm guessing that this distance here should be the 50 thousandths that I set. Um, and you can see it actually follows the path. So let's see what that actually looks like on the milling machine. Uh, one other thing to mention is that the uh, these red lines here are actually the motion of the the, uh, the the milling machine between cuts. So it'll finish cut here and it'll move along the red line and, and move over here. So it is important to, to know that as well. Alright, let's see how this looks. Hopefully it works a little better. Okay, one last try. I only got about halfway through on this uh, initial pocket. Uh, so that's still going to be there, but I can finish out the pocket later. Um, this is, well, it's not really a pocket. It was like the top top layer. Um, but, like I said, I can finish it out later. Uh, so let's get to the, this is called a water line. This should help speed this up.
I think I'm gonna call it quits here. You can see how shaky this was. <laughs> so it's uh, it was a good lesson for. Oh wow, yeah. If you look at the. Uh... Yeah, so that's not the good way to mount it. But if you could actually see how rough that makes it, it was shaking a lot when it was back over here just because of how the holes were. It was actually okay around here, but you could start to see some of the different levels and stuff. And I think this actually turns out. So I ended up modifying this picture quite a bit. Um, you can kind of see it looks like a dog. It's just kind of like smiling. But uh, definitely a couple things I want to do is I need to get a better bit. Obviously this is not good for engraving. This is a eighth inch bit. Um, but then this material is actually okay. Aside from, you know, you really shouldn't still inhale it. But I need to do better on my mounting. And, uh, and now I, I've, I get the... the cam part in there. Uh, since I'll probably just end up posting this video, I also, this is what I did in that green stuff that I ended up grabbing. This was like a, a stock image off of there, so I ended up modifying a little bit. But this is just like a three-layer engraved. There's a just outside layer, and then there's the heart, and then the text here. So, yeah, this is something I did in that. I was figuring it's Valentine's Day weekend, so why not? Uh, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll try this again. I'll get a time lapse of it up, and then uh, and then hopefully I can work on my clamping. I also need to start working on uh, uh, oiling up this machine. I got a bunch of motor oil and stuff, and I need to make sure it's all clean. I need to clean everything off now because this stuff seems pretty caustic from you know, and it just seems like it would soak up the oil because it's it's styrofoam. So uh, yeah, so that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll hopefully insert some of the cam stuff in there. I have so hopefully will have, will have, uh, but if not, um, I'll do that in a different video. All right, till next time.